What's up everybody? <clears throat> I'm making a video just to show you all my studio. Uh, it's right before exit. I got three, four days, something like that. Um, everything has been crazy. So, I've been up crazy late just about every night, but I'm getting it knocked out. So, uh, this is where I do my mold making. I have my um, scale, uh, but I'm doing it by volume now. Seems more accurate and easier just using buckets. Um, some spray paint, spray paint I got because I can't really read the plastic or the resin because um, it's white and it's kind of hard to see the forms. Uh, this is my pressure pot setup. I've got the whole thing on wheels so that um, so that I can take it wherever it needs to go. Um, my compressor, hose. Uh, quick detach thing. I can use the uh, pressure hose to spray out my molds, or I can uh, quick snap it into this thing. And then my pressure gauge. I'm, pr I'm pressurizing up to about 55 uh, psi, and uh, the actual pot. I've got it leveled out in there with a tin foil over some foam core. Dremel, which I'm using to clean up my resin castings. All my epoxies I got today, today to uh, finish fixing all these castings. The follow and Daphne, that's never going to get done. Although I did completely re sculpt follow. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is my kind of craziest project so far. Um, this guy's just brutal. I'll turn this down. Maybe you can't hear me. I don't even know. Um, yeah, so he's gotten crazier and crazier. Um, he's looking really good, and I'm really happy with him. A lot of things have changed since the initial plan. And again, like I said, you can't really see the forms very well in the white kind of tough but uh and he's missing some pieces to his head right now he's got these uh these have to be cast separate though because they're such undercuts but pieces of his helmet and he's also got these um crazy horns so uh as well as an axe which is the head's getting cast tonight getting rubbered and uh this is the back of the axe goes in his palm and then I just spent ugh, way too long, like two hours, sculpting this whip. But that's some crazy detail. Come on, camera, focus. No? Oh well, there's crazy detail here. You have to see it in person, I guess. Once my camera fails, my jam box. Darren, you're the man. I listen to this thing every day. Plugged up to my. Well, it's doing it Bluetooth right now, but playing Pandora and making my life not terrible. This is good. My Ultra Waxer. Love it. Uh, my heat lamp. Heating up two different types of waxes right now. I got the soft wax back there. That's ether from Willow Products. And uh, then the hard stuff is uh, Zen. Um, the Zen stuff, I feel like, tends to... It's not very hot because I've got the light so high right now. I feel like it tends to crumble. Um, can't really get around it and it kind of drives me nuts. So I'm tending to stick with ether. But it was awesome for sculpting the head, uh, getting all the details and stuff. But I actually sculpted all the limbs and uh, Zen, the hard wax. So that was good. Uh, my assortment of tools. Um, way too many. I need to put it down. My bed. <laughs> um, my rubber molds. All these molds here are all the ones on the camera screen right now were done for the demon. And all the ones over here were done for this guy. I'll be in my show as well. And 
I am right about to... Where's that dude? Uh, oh, he's in the freezer. Let's go to the freezer. Um, right about to... Cast this guy out. My Dr. Pepper, keeping me alive all this time. Um, this guy, I've got him in the fridge because he's made with a soft wax, and I'm about to cast him. I don't want him to move uh, through that process. But uh, that'll be coming out of the chest of the dude who we just saw, who I painted brown. Um, and uh, so I've got a lot of molds to go there. Uh, um, so. This is what resin castings look like when you first grab them. This one has no vents because I poured it at the right angle so it would capture the whole foot without a vent. Uh, but it's just got this poor cup down at the bottom and you just saw it off with a with a um, jeweler saw. And then hopefully they lock right into place if their shoulders lock in place. Some of my connections aren't as smooth as I'd like, but getting there, getting better. So, there's a drawer saw. Um, let's see here. I think that's it. Oh, we can talk a little bit about rubber, I guess. Rubber and resins. Um, so I'm using Mold Max 30. It's a Shore A 30 uh, strength rubber. And it's pretty good stuff. I've been pushing the catalyst a little bit uh, to get them to set up quicker because they set up in 24 hours and sometimes I don't have 24 hours. So uh, I've been pushing it a little and I've got another catalyst on the way so I can continue to do that because I'm out of time so my rovers need to set up quick. Um, even if that means they go bad a little bit quicker than they should. Uh, resins I'm using, uh, what is it, 305? Smoothcast 305 as well as I've got some some clear stuff up here I don't know what the heck that stuff's called but some a product by smooth on that's going to be clear resin because this guy is going to be cast in a clear green tinted resin um, here's my colorants for it one like toothpick of this stuff will color like a huge amount of stuff um, all right surely that's it all right think so. Oh, let's give Tim Bruckner his due credit, man. This dude is my hero. This book is like my sculpture bible. If you don't own it and you're doing this stuff, you should. It's incredible. Every step of the way is helping me out. So, alright. Ciao, ciao.